Hi, this is David. In the last video I showed you how to create a Spring Boot application, a really simple one. In fact, I have it open right here. All it does is just print out something on the console. Uh, today I'm going to create something a little bit more useful. I will create a REST service. This will be a web service that you can get to through HTTP. Now, Spring Boot supports something called the MVC pattern, the Model View Controller pattern. So to make this happen, I want to create a controller. Now here's the application that I created last time. Uh, you can see that in the pom.xml there are dependencies for Spring Boot in here. If you want to learn how to create this, go back to that last video. But in the source code here, what I can do is I can add a new package, and a package is kind of like a folder. In fact, it maps to a folder on the file system. I'll call this folder uh, controllers right there, and inside of that package I'm going to add a new Java class, and this will be my controller. So I'm going to call it gcast controller right there. And what I want to do is uh, decorate this with a couple of attributes. Decorate this class declaration. And one of those is going to be at rest controller. I'll press tab right there, and that finishes this the the word REST controller. It knows about that, uh, but it also adds this import statement so it knows exactly where to find REST controller. I don't have to fully qualify with that namespace. Uh, now this is a controller. Now to get to this through HTTP, I need the URL. The URL, when I launch this application, I'll, I'll launch it either locally to localhost or I'll put it out on a web server and they'll have a domain name pointing to it. So, but beyond that domain name, it'll be HTTP colon whack whack something and then after that, I want to say this particular controller is going to have more of that URL. We call that the mapping. I want to map some URL to this controller class. And the way I do that is with the request mapping attribute. And in this case, I want to say the request mapping will be um, gcast. So what that means is that if somebody types in HTTP colon whack whack domain slash gcast, they will get to this controller. Now there's nothing in this controller yet, so it won't work. I need to add some methods to it. So I'm going to add a method here, a public method, and I'm going to call this one uh, say hello. That'll be the name of it. It doesn't take any arguments. It has to return something. So what I'm going to do is I have to return something called a response entity. And a response entity is an HTTP response. So it'll have uh, a status code like uh, 200 equals OK or 404 equals not found or whatever. Um, and it'll also have, it'll have headers and it'll have a body. And in that body, I want to make sure that I pass in some text. So I'll make sure that it is of type string. So it was a response entity of type string called say hello is the method. And all I'm going to do in here is I'm going to return a new response entity of string. Oops. String. And the string itself will be this string. Well, actually, this takes two parameters. The first one is going to be, uh, yeah, the string will be hello and the return code will be uh, HTTP status dot OK which I have to spell correctly there we go right there and that's it so this says that it's, uh, it's, I have a method in here called say hello, again, spelling counts, and I want to decorate this also with something that'll tell it what URL maps to this. And so there is a mapping URL that'll do that, and it is the get mapping. Now get mapping means that I can get to this with an HTTP get. HTTP has multiple verbs it can use, get, put, post, patch, delete. 
Uh, Git is the one that's by default used when you just type a URL into a browser and in the address bar hit enter. So I'm going to use that one and I'm going to use the, uh, I'll call it greet. It will be the mapping right here. If I wanted to support some posts, I would do post mapping instead. But Git is very simple. So that's what I'm going to do. So now the URL should be http colon whack whack something slash gcast slash greet. gcast because of the class, greet because of this method. That's how it's going to be mapped. Let's test it out, make sure I've spelled everything correctly. Go back into my application and well, let's, let's, let's build it first. Make sure I, my syntax is all good. Down here at the bottom you see it's building. And that worked. And now we will run this application. When we run it, the only thing we're going to see is this output right here. To actually invoke that controller, we have to go make an, a, a GET request to the URL that's mapped to it. Something slash gcast slash greet. So let's do that. And you'll notice that it's on port 8080. And I'm running this on my local machine, so it'll be a local host request. So the way I've mapped that is with HTTP localhost slash 8080 slash gcast slash, what was the last part of it? Um, greet. And there it is. I returned the string hello. Now that's all hard coded. That's not very useful. But let's make it a little bit more dynamic than that. The way that I can make it more dynamic is by changing this routing to actually accept another parameter. There's a few ways to do that. One of which is to just add a variable here inside of some curly braces. So I want to add person name. So I want to say gcast slash greet slash David, and I want to return hello David. How about that? Let's do that. In fact, let's do it as a, uh, a second method. Down here, and we'll have to give a different name. Say hello personal. And this time we'll say greet slash person name right here. And instead of just hard coding hello, I'll say string greeting equals hello plus person name. And the person name has to be an argument to pass in. So I want an argument in here called person name right there. And not only do I want to have an argument, I want to say, where do I get that argument from? Well, it's going to be mapped to this part of the URL, this person name. And the way I do that is I decorate this parameter right here with a path variable attribute. So I say path variable quote person name. And what that does, it says that this parameter right here maps to that argument in the path variable right there. And now instead of hard coding hello, I'll actually, in the body of this response, I'll pass the greeting, which will be hello plus whatever name was passed in. All right. Uh, and again, it's a response entity, so it'll have an HTTP status code. In this case, it'll be a 200, which is OK. It's all good. And let's all, uh, it's worth pointing out that this variable here and this variable here, I, I made them the same, but they don't have to be. You can use different variable names. I like to keep them consistent so it's easy to tell what's mapped to what. I don't have to think about that. All right, let's go back to here and run this again. And now it's running, and now to test it, instead of just going to slash gcast slash greet, I want to go to the slash gcast slash greet slash something right here. So gcast slash greet slash David, 
and they come back with hello David. And you can see that this is dynamic right here. If I say Satya, then it's hello Satya. So now I've actually created a controller that maps some functionality, a little bit of dynamic functionality to a URL. And that's what a REST API is. We can expand this to return data, maybe do something like look up data in a database or call another web service. We can have data, uh, data coming back as JSON, something more complex than just a string. But this is the gist of it. This is David. Thank you for watching.